most of us think of copper as something we use to make saucepans, it's actually a much bigger part of our daily lives. It's in smartphones, MP3 players, laptops and cars, and many industries from the transport to the health sector depend on it. But the industry itself fears European legislation is putting it at a disadvantage. This week, MEPs and experts are discussing how best to balance environmental sustainability and industrial competitiveness. The EU 2020 strategy adopted by EU leaders sets out a path for getting Europe out of crisis and seeing it return to long-term sustainable growth. Key elements of the strategy include investing in research and innovation to develop new products and services, including finding ways to reduce our dependency on polluting energy sources, for example. And we can already see some of the results of Europe's investment, with hybrid cars, for example, appearing on the market. But the company selling the final product is at the end of a long production line. Polish MEPs Piotr Boris and Jacek Protasiewicz want to shift some attention to those at the start of it. They're asking experts and policymakers to assess the EU regulations that govern copper and other underlying industries. We need to discuss here in the European Parliament how to combine both um, higher environmental standards and expectations and demands from people, from policymakers, and um, efficiency and um, the, bus the, the business community needs, since uh, we should uh, set up standards which are common for the whole world, not only for Europe, uh, because it may lead to lower competitiveness. The difference between standards in Europe and elsewhere is one of the key challenges facing both policymakers and industry when it comes to Europe's ability to gain leadership in these industrial areas. Environmental legislation in particular is higher in Europe than in other parts of the world. The European Copper Institute has set up an exhibition in Parliament this week to raise awareness of the importance of the copper industry. Its chief executive, John Schonenberger, talked to us about the effect of the emissions trading scheme on their competitiveness. One of the major things for us right now is under the emissions trading scheme. And from 2013, the copper industry will fall under, under the ETS. And the, the, the concern or the fear we have is that unless the other copper producing parts of the world fall under the ETS at the same time, or something equivalent, then the costs that our industry face are not something that the other uh, competitors around the world will face. And with a fixed income, uh, global income, the margin of the industry gets squeezed dramatically. Pavel Misiga, head of the Environment and Industry Unit at the European Commission, told us he believes that setting high environmental standards is not incompatible with increasing our competitiveness. I believe that what is good for environment is good for business uh, uh, and there is um, there is emerging policy in, in the Commission uh, resource efficiency policy one of the flagship uh, initiative identified under the EU 2020 strategy that has this objective to to find the the win-win solutions that will improve resource efficiency reduce environmental impacts of resource use and at the same time help the European economy to become more competitive. So are environmental regulations governing our industry restricting European competitiveness? I asked Mr. Protasiewicz what he thought. The European Commission, led by um, José Manuel Barroso, proposes even deregulation. So, so far I don't think there is a threat for uh, the European industry, including the copper industry, of uh, being uh, too much over-regulated. However, we should remember here that um, too much regulations may lead uh, to financial and economical uh, crisis uh, in, our, on our, in our continent. And finally, most of many companies may move to Asia. 